Right, hello, lads and lasses, and welcome back to Boys Down Under, where today we have got to preview Celtic's first ever match ever in the Europa Conference League. Now, before we go any further, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's the best way to help support the channel grow, and I'd be forever appreciative of you guys if you helped did that. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the Europa Conference League, it's another European competition along with the Europa League and Champions League. And it is a competition that has allowed Celtic this season to play European football after Christmas. Our opposition, Bodo Glimt of Norway. Now they are the champions of Norway to take it a step further and a team that can be incredibly dangerous when on form. Just look at how they thumped Jose Mourinho's Roma 6-1 on their own turf. As for the current Bodo Glimt, however, they have not played a competitive match since the final Conference League match day back in the 10th of December. That was the final match day, and yeah, since then, it's only been friendly fixtures for the Norwegian side. And as for recent friendly matches, their results go as followed. Most recently, they beat IF Elfsborg of Sweden, I believe, 3-2. They beat AGF 1-0, and they drew with Dynamo Kiev 1-0. Oh, they drew 1-0. You can't draw 1-0. Stupid from me, but we move. So think of that as you will. And I don't know enough about these oppositions. And with the matches being friendly, you can't really gather a lot. You know, preseason form, it's form that, sort of doesn't really tell the whole truth, you know? They're going to be a bit rusty in some gears, obviously, but there's going to be some gears as well that they might have just clicked into prior to this Celtic match. So, we don't know. We're, we're, we can't know too much about this team. It, the most we can gather from them is how they've played last season, but since last season, they have lost a host of players. But we'll more on that later. And as for Celtic, because we've got to talk about our form as well, and it's been immaculate. There is no other way to put it. It has been immaculate. You know, we are five from five. Well, you know, actually, we are nine from nine in all competitions. Undefeated since the 26th of November. So, yeah, I'd say we're in pretty good form, don't you reckon? And, you know, we all know Europe is a completely different ball game to, to the Scottish League and Scottish Cup matches, which we'll cover later. However... Yeah, it's certainly, having this form with us right now is certainly a huge, huge uh, factor into going into this match. But into injuries and suspensions, and Bodo are fielding a full-strength team, a full-strength team, as they're technically still in pre-season, so they haven't got any injury, injury worries. You know, their manager is still there after knocking back the Aberdeen job. So they are fit and ready to go. But as for Celtic, we will be missing Kyogo, David Turnbull, Ayeti, Johnny Kenny, uh, Mikey Johnson, Karamoko, and Yasuki Itaguchi. Now, all the players are injured. Uh, Karamoko isn't fit enough. And Itaguchi actually is ineligible to play this match because he wasn't registered in the Europa League team for this cup fixture. However, I do feel he probably will be uh, featured in it for the next round if we do make it that far. However, we do have some good news and we do welcome back our fireball, Josip Juranovic. He's overcome illness. But that leads us into the starting lineup and it's going to be a strong lineup. You know, we, might have, we may have a few players out. However, this is going to be a very similar lineup, I think, to what we saw against Rangers. Add in a couple of the, uh, what's it called? Add in a couple of the international boys and a couple returning players as well. But no more dilly-dallying. Let's go. Let's go into it. And I've got Joe Hart in goals. Then at right back, it's the fireball. Josip Juranovic. We need him back in the team if he is available. Then the two centre-backs. No surprises here. It is Carl Starfelt and Cameron Carter-Vickers. Don't think Welsh or Julian could start this match. And I don't think Andrew will ever go down that path. Then at left back, Greggy Taylor. And I'll be honest with you. I, I probably I, I still still have a tendency to prefer Liam Scales. However, I'm predicting the lineup, and because I'm predicting it, I have to go through what I have to think of what Ange is going to think, and what Ange is going to think is Greg Taylor all day, every day. Then into the midfield trio, CDM. It has to be our captain, Callum McGregor. You can't have anyone else bar there except and with the Phantom of the Opera mask on, he is pretty much you know invincible. 
Then as the box-to-box -box midfielder, I'm going for Super Rio Hatate. He's had a couple quiet games most recently, but I just think that's because he set the bar so high for himself. So hopefully, you know, we can see him at his damaging best against Bodo. Then the cam spot goes to Tommy Rogic. And I'll be honest with you, Rogic has played a lot of games recently. He started quite a few games. So don't be surprised if we do see Matt O'Reilly get cam. It's a very strong possibility. Ange is clearly a fan of him, but I do feel that Rogic is the way to go and it has to be the wizard starting in the spot. Then into the front three. On the left wing, no surprises here. It is Jota. He, 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 you know, he loves he loves a good European fixture, Jota does. Under the lights of paradise, can't see a reason not to start him. Then on the right wing, it is Leal Abada. Hopefully he can get some more goals in. He's had a couple games where he hasn't scored after such an incredible run of form. I still reckon he's in form, so hopefully he will be at his damaging best tonight. Or tomorrow morning for me. Then as the striker... I reckon it will be Georges Giacomarquez. I see the argument for Dyson Maida. However, I just feel Ange will have the tendency to go with Giacomarquez. And then, after getting a, cup, a few goals ahead, maybe one or two, if the game goes that way, then he can introduce Dyson around maybe the 60th, 70th minute mark and just pester the defence. Or use that super sub pace that Dyson has and try and find the winner if necessary. But... That leads us into the final score prediction. And it's going to be a very, very strong lineup, I reckon. I re uh, Sorry, why am I talking about a lineup? I think it's going to be a very, very, I wouldn't say comfortable, but a very favourable scoreline for Celtic. And I can't lie, I am confident. And that's not me being cocky. That's not me thinking Bodo are a, a, a pushover. That is me believing that the form this Celtic team is, we can't lose, you know. We may slip up here and there, you know. The second half against Aberdeen, bit of a slip up. First half against Wraith Rovers, quite poor. However, the Celtic team always just finds a way to win. And that's the that's what the best football teams do. They find a way to win, even when, you know, nothing is going their way. And look, at Celtic Park, it's a European night. The, the disco lights are going to be on. It doesn't fail to disappoint, and I think the players will live up to that expectation, and they will not disappoint either. It's going to be a spectacle, and although, you know, Bodo haven't played much football, it's clear as day, you know, maybe a few players are lacking match fitness, maybe they haven't got into the rhythm yet that they were in last year when they were at their damaging best. They will come out, and they will give it their all. They know they need to attack, attack. they know they need to score. Actually... What? They know they can't concede. They, the, the thing is with Celtic, you know, if you play into Celtic's hand by playing an attacking style of football, you leave yourself open to the counter. And, you know, although although Bodo have the capabilities of putting, you know, five, six goals past quality teams, like they did against Jose Mourinho's AS Roma, their defence is their best asset. They only conceded 25 goals in 30 league matches last season. That's... I can't do the math right now. I'm not good enough at it, but... It, it, it's, a, it's a ridiculous stat, and it's, and so their defence, you know, they know how to defend. And I think it's going to be up to Celtic to break it down, to break down the Bodo defence, because that, that, that their defence was a key part, a key piece of the puzzle to their league success last year. So it won't be no pushover. But, you know, being at home, this Celtic team, we have what it takes to win this match. And I must say, yet again, Bodo... They're going to be defensive, and I'll tell you why they're going to be defensive, because the away goals rule has been abolished. No longer does an away goal mean anything, anything at all in terms of world football, or well, in European football, but you're looking at it, Bodo don't need a score. They will be more than happy to go into Norway nil all. They'll be more than happy to go at one all even. You know, they don't have to win this match. It's not a must-win match for Bodo as much as it is for Celtic, because I can't lie, I'd be quite nervous going into a match in Norway, not with a lead in the tie. Because, you know, it, it's a whole different country. It's, it's a completely different pitch. They play on an artificial pitch. It's, it, it's not benefiting Celtic, you know. This, it, that atmosphere, that, I'm sure Bodo would have such a home ground advantage over other teams, especially with the artificial pitch. So that's why Celtic need to win this match. It is a must-win match for Celtic. We need to be taking, you know, a comfortable lead in the tie over to Norway... And 
It's a must win, but I am confident this will be a win for Celtic. I'm not sure what you guys are thinking out there. Leave it in the comments below, but I am confident. I'm not so confident and cocky that it's 100% guaranteed, but I am confident that Celtic will walk away from this match as 3-1 winners. And hopefully that will be the case and we can take a two-goal lead in the tie to Norway where it won't be critical that we win the match and it will only be critical that we see out the rest of the tie proper and ball style. But look, back to the match. The match we're playing t tonight and tomorrow morning for us in Australia. 3-1 win, GG to score, Abada to score, and Juranovic to bag a penalty. I do think we might concede, though. I can see, you know, maybe just a, a blunder in defence or just, you know, a consolation goal late on. I see it happening. Hopefully it doesn't happen. I'd much rather prefer 3-0. It is what it is, though, but that is all from me. So remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave in the comments below your final score prediction, and until next time, hail, hail.